going to start with the the quail. Um, these ones have still got the necks in as well. We're not going to need that, so I'm going to remove that. Okay. I'm also, at this stage, just going to remove the through the natural joint if I can. Uh, remove the the wings. And the idea with this ballotine is that, if possible, we're going to um, end up with something that's got no holes in the skin. So therefore I'm going to start on the bottom of the carcass. This one's going to be tricky to do because it looks like the carcass has already snapped. Okay, but what I'm going to do is put down a line and I've got to work my way around just under the skin. I'm going to try and keep the skin as intact as I can as I go around. And I should be able to go through natural joints. Shouldn't have to cut through any bones. See, I've gone through the natural joint there at the end of the wing. I'm just following around, gently scraping, and the same here. Remember on the chicken for sauté that you did last year, you pop the joint out, and I'm going to pop the joint out of that leg, and then from this end, I should be able to go through. Okay, I'll take it off so that as I carry on going around the carcass, just gently, a little more, a bit more skill to this than there is to doing the chicken for sauté. What I'm going to do now is take the breast off, but the opposite way. So I'm going to scrape along the bone. Until I get up to where the breastplate is. And you can see the back end of the breastplate just there. And I've scraped it all up. There's your breastplate. Okay, and I'm going to stop there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now go around the other direction and join the two up. So exactly the same. I'm going to start scraping against the carcass. Through the little natural joint there. And at the end of the wing bone. Coming along here. Again, I'm going to go round to there and pop that leg out of joint so that I can get the knife through it. Just following the carcass around. Quite small and fiddly, especially when you've got large hands, but more than capable all of you doing this. And I'm following the carcass around again the other way. I think once the carcass is out, I think the Absolutely. Legs are easier then. Yeah. So you can see that, uh, that I've got the other side of the breastplate. Let's move that little bit of sinew. Okay. Now the idea is that I'm going to scrape up to the breastplate, if I can, take it out so that I've got that there. I didn't take the wishbone out at the start, you could do if you wanted to, as long as we get it out now before we start doing anything else with it, because uh, if you leave any bones in this it's going to be absolutely awful. Okay. So that's the main carcass out, we've still got the breasts there and the milli fillets, but we've still now got the legs and these little wing bones to get out. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do with the wing bones is almost do it as I'm turning them inside out. I've got a little bit more bone on there that I've left on, so we can get rid of that. Okay, and around here, I'm just going to use my fingers to loosen the flesh from around this end, the inside of the bone where it joined to the carcass. Okay, and it's almost like I'm turning this in. If, uh, See, I've turned the, the little wing bone inside out. Once I've gone to that, I'll cut it off. So from the outside of the wing, okay, whereas that's in, what I've done is turn that bit inside out. Okay, so I'm going to do the same this side. That one's actually snapped. So we're going to struggle a little bit with this one. But once again, from this end, I'm going to use my fingers and a bit of brute force just to loosen the flesh off. You could use a knife, but it, because it's so small, it's quite tricky. So I'm going to work my fingers around it to try and remove as much flesh as I can. Once again, I'm going to turn that bone inside out. There's that bit, but remember we had that broken bit on there as well, so I'm just going to trim that bit off and I'm going to turn that one inside out as well. Okay, so now what we've got is the breast there and no bone in that part, the only bone that's left is the leg. Okay. 
So what I can do, a bit like bone in a chicken leg, I'm going to go around and take the thigh bone out, which is very, very easy on a quail. Okay, so I've got that. I'll do the same on this one. Scrape against it so that you can see the bone down either side, around underneath. So we've taken the thigh bones. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is the same as I did before. But before I do it, I'm actually just going to snip these bits off because the ends of these bones are now clean and hopefully what I'm going to be able to do, I've got to go around the little elbow joint, or the knee joint, and actually work that out and turn the legs inside out as well. Okay, so I'm going to work my way around. Be careful because the other end of this bone is quite sharp now. Okay, I don't really want you impaling yourself with it. It's not pleasant. So if I've scraped this down a little bit, this inside out as well. Okay, which leaves me one more to do. Okay, tiny little bit more bone on there. Okay, if you get any tiny little bits coming off that's fine because we can always put them back into it. Okay, so once again I've got my thigh bone on there. I've got to try and work my way around this knee joint using my fingers as much as possible. On the knife where needed. Once I've got round it pull that joint out. So what I should end up with now is a completely boneless piece of meat. And what we can see is that we've got the two breasts just there and the two legs just here. And that's the way I want to roll it up. Okay? I want to roll it up that way so that when it's rolled and sliced you'll get a little bit of leg meat and a bit of breast meat um, at the same time. Okay. If I rolled it that way, all the leg meat would be at one end of the galantine and all the breast meat would be at the other. Okay. So, I'm going to stretch the skin out into a bit of a square. I've got the breast pieces away from me. Okay. And there's a reason that I'm going to do that. Okay. And I'm positioning the leg meat so that it's, it's well within there on this side. Now, if you have a look from where we took the wishbone out, you see that there's actually quite a lot of fat on the skin which I'm gently going to scrape off as much as I can. I don't want all that fat in it, but I do want the skin. So I notice once I've cut the fat off, I can get rid of that. And that leaves me a bit of skin protruding the other side. Okay? Now there are certain things you could do on here. We could pipe a bit of mousse on, put some spinach leaves and a slice of parma ham and a bit more mousse before we roll it up. You can do whatever you wish. But just for a basic one, I'm going to put the mousse, so there's this nice sort of chicken and herb mousse here. Okay, which I'm going to pipe along in a line. Okay, and I'm gently, because I don't want to squeeze it all out at the end, I'm going to roll that over. And the reason why I've left that excess bit of skin is because I've got something to wrap around a bit further now. Okay, I can pinch these end bits of skin. This mousse is a little bit on the soft side. Carefully move that on. Okay. What I want to do is keep the shape on this. So I'm going to roll the cling film over, making sure if I can that there's no air pockets and getting a bit of a, a shape on it. Any little air pockets I'm going to try and slide out. Okay. And as I roll it up, do because if we're going to poach this because for a galantine uh, we use the poaching what's the difference between a galantine and a balantine? No, you got that the wrong way around. Yeah. <coughs> galantine is sort of cold which is either a cold starter or a cafe or something like that so it's usually poached so we're going to poach this. A balantine um, is served hot and it's usually, I know we use sous vide, sous vide these days, but traditionally it was either braised or roasted. Okay, Either can be a whole bird and either can be a joint. There's no, you know, some people think that a leg is a galatine and a whole bird is a balatine. Rubbish. 
right? So what I want to do though is make sure there's no air in it, so I'm going to squeeze it just there and get rid of the air out of that, and then I'm going to tie a knot in this end. Okay, as close to as I can, and I'm going to do the same at the other end, squeeze the air out. But this time, before I tie it, what I'm going to do is get a pinch on there and roll it up so that we get in our shape. And then when I tie this end, I'm going to tie it as close as I can so that it keeps the shape. And that's your Ballotino Galatine.